Oh, well, well, well. Yep, he moved up the death chart. Yep. Oh, I hate this shit. Franklin, buddy, what's up? Hey, look, there's these redneck dudes been looking for you, homie. Some angry motherfuckers. I found what. Yes, he did. Happy as can be. Actually, I don't need to do that. All right, saw an article on it today, um, a little bit ago. Um, he's moving up the depth chart. I mean, he's definitely moving up the depth chart. I think they want to put him in with the first team, just to see what he can do. You know what I mean? Because it doesn't hurt to put him in and see what he could do against a little bit better talent. Because he's already beating guys that have been starters in this league. I'm uh, just going to invite some people in here. <clears throat> Not some people, but mostly. Well, nobody's online. Okay, well. All right. Usually 59ers is in here. And getting some stuff done. He's gonna. I think they're moving him up. I think they're moving him up to the first team um, to see what he can do against starters. I mean, it doesn't mean he's gonna be starting the regular season. I think. They, I think they just want to see him um, go against some better talent because he's actually doing a good job against you know second, third year players. So they want to see him against pure starters. Oh, you're drinking the apple shit tonight? I don't know how you do that. Man, I'm telling you, like, what in the fuck? All the reds. There's actually a, an apple drink that I like a lot. I had it. It's like a gold, it's like a yellow color. It's like a gold color. I forgot what it's called though. A gold color or uh, something like that. Um, I don't really drink. I don't drink, dude. I don't even drink that much. I drink when I go to, not even when I go to Eagles games. I drink when I go to on vacation. I drink pure leaf iced tea and oh yeah yeah angry orchard I don't know uh, Derek Barnett is showing a lot right now I mean it, it doesn't hurt the it's only the third preseason game so it doesn't hurt to put him and start but we'll definitely you know they're practicing with the Miami Dolphins Monday and Tuesday so hopefully you know we're gonna see something within that spot you know we'll see something happen uh, start to accumulate um, and see what he can do at that point. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm kind of actually happy to see what he can actually do. So not, um, definitely not upset over it. 
That guy deserves to move up the depth chart anyway, so if he's not moving up the depth chart, there's a damn problem. So... Have a lot of high hopes for Derek Barnett this year, guys. You know what? He might not have all the sack numbers. Like all about this defensive line, you gotta, you gotta really, you gotta really see that it's all about the pressure. If the guys are getting pressure, they're doing their job. But did you see yesterday how that pocket that collapsed? It collapsed like it was literally like a, uh, I don't know. It was like, it was, it was crazy to watch. Like to see a pocket collapse like that was great. Green Forest, Dar uh, Darby, and number 14, the wires. You're gonna, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry, yes. Good matchup. And Matt Collins. Don't forget Matt Collins. They got two deep threats on this team. Uh, Matt Collins was a guy that we were actually looking at. Um, we were actually looking at um, in free agency last year. I'm actually happy we didn't get him. I think he got paid way too much money to be a deep threat. 11, 12 million. Jarvis Landry still hasn't got a deal done with the Miami Dolphins. Um, so, you know, he could run in the free agency next year. And don't you fucking say it. Because we're not doing it. Not even saying it. But, man, even Ronald Darby, man, oof, my God, what a friggin' debut that kid had. If he had that pick six, it would have been better, but I don't even give a shit. I know he'll get a pick six this year. I know he'll do a lot of good things this year, but that guy just showed us. He showed us within a day of, of, of training camp and, a, and one game that he's, he's the number one corner on our team. Yeah, LeVon Bell, yeah. Yeah, I could see him being available for free agency as well, but if he if if he's gonna he's gonna get paid more. He's gonna wanna get paid a lot of money. So, I mean we we paid LeGarrette Blunt, you know, two point eight million, so he's gonna want more money, and I don't think they wanna pay for you know I don't know how old do you know how much uh, Le uh Le'Veon Bell is? How how old he is? Sorry, how much he is, how old he is. MC Eagles, yeah, I haven't been this hyped for Darby as a cornerback in a long time. Yeah, I know. And honestly, I knew about him, but I never really, um, I never really followed him too much until, you know, recently as we picked him up. And oh, he's only twenty. Le'Veon Bell is only twenty-five. Shit. Um, just just talking about the um about Ronald Darby dude like he I mean did, I mean I knew about him but that was pretty much it because we don't follow the bills too much I don't really follow the bills too much so um you know it, it looked really nice I I I, li I liked him I really did Yeah well D Green Forest just remember Byron Maxwell actually said that they're going to they're going to regret the Eagles are going to regret for letting me go Remember what he said because he's got to get fucking burned next week I don't give a shit. He has a... I wouldn't say he doesn't... I mean, he doesn't... I'm not saying he plays like a Richard... He doesn't play like a Richard Sherman because he's not... He's not a physical corner. Um, but at the same time, I think Richard Sherman's a little physical, but he, he's not... Um, 
he doesn't use his legs most of the time. I mean, he he likes slowing a receiver down and then getting and getting in his face. <laughs> He's garbage. Please get out of here. <laughs> Richard Sherman. Uh, his 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 uh, timing is limited. Sorry guys, I'm sorry I'm not playing. I'm, I will be. I just um, I'm probably gonna put in another game. This has just came in. We but but what are the chances of the Eagles signing Jarvis Landry? I don't know. I, I really don't because we already got to sign receivers this year. We already got to sign. I already know Timmy Jernigan's gonna get signed. Th this is why the Timmy Jernigan's definitely gonna get signed. Um, Alshon Jeffrey's gonna get signed. <sighs> We're just gonna see. Um, we're just going to see and find out. I mean, I have no idea. I really don't. I don't know if it's the, if we should go after a guy like Jarvis Landry. I, I don't know. I really don't. Because we could go after somebody in the draft that's a deep threat. I mean, depending on what our first where we end up with our first round pick, you know, it depends. Yeah, I know if J-Matt did play, it would have been a lot of drama. It would have been... I, th I think with we I, it definitely hurt. It definitely hurt the team for a few days. But I think when they saw Ronald Darby and what he could do on that defense, I know Malcolm Jenkins and and Ronnie McLeod are sick and tired of seeing these guys bring it, this organization bringing in corners that can't do a damn thing for us. And it's getting to that point where it's, I mean, stop overpaying corners. Go get corners from the draft. Build this defense from the fucking draft. That's why we got Joe Douglas here. We got Joe Douglas here to build this damn defense the right way. And he's building it the right way. MC Eagles, um, yeah, I love the support Long gave to Jenkins during the national anthem. Yeah, of course. I mean, I know in Chris Long's, um, I know in his point of view of it, it all the, all the, you know, the, the shit that Trump said and everything and how wrong it was. Um, it's his hometown. It hits him where it hurts, and, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. But um, I understand, like... The Mal you know, even Malcolm Malcolm Jenkins and a lot of other players are doing things that, you know, they're not staying for the pledge and everything like that. But at the same time, it's, it's like uh, I don't even want to get. I hate politics. I honestly don't even want to talk about this because I can get into an argument with people for days over this shit. It's just not worth it. Everything in this country is not perfect. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. You know, as long as we live, as long as we, we were not under a dictatorship, as long as we're not, you know, being enslaved, but you know, by color or race, you know, we're, we're one of the we're the best country in the whole in the whole fucking universe. It's it's best the whole and I didn't say the world, the universe. Oh, yeah. Ron Ronald is the best corner we have had in a long time. Green Forest. Yes, that is right. We haven't had a good corner like that since Shelton Brown. A at least, you know, Asante Samuel. You know, at the same time, it's like you got the Asante Samuel shit, too. Uh, you know, so that's that's friggin' awesome. Sorry, guys. I'm trying to upload a damn video, and it's pissing me off. Uh, 
Yeah, I'm trying to upload a video. I, I, I'm getting a new phone next week. Um, I'm up, actually uploading a video on the Derek Barnett situation right now. Um, I did something real quick. Um, I know um, I have a little channel update. I have a little bit of a channel update. I'm changing my whole scenery. I'm changing um, pretty much where I do my videos now. You know, getting close to a thousand subs and can't be happier. And um, oh my God, very, very humble. And I fucking love the people that comment. I mean, I, it's it's crazy. Like the people that comment, I feel like I know them personally. And it's, it's going to be nice. Like I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait to get more people on these conversations. You know, I already have a lot of people on these conversations, but I, I can't wait until, you know, the channel gets a little bit bigger and, you know, we're actually going to do a lot a lot more things. Sunday I'm going to the Lil Uzi Vert concert. I'm so excited. I don't listen to Lil Uzi. I listen to uh, the Migos. I don't know if you know the Migos. Um, my friend actually got me into them from work. My friend from work got me into the Migos, and uh, I, I like that they're very catchy. I like them. I like try. Uh, um, what's his name? Um, I listen to him. Uh, Travis Scott is one of my favorites too. I love I love Travis Scott as well. I listen to Big Sean here and there. Dude, Spunky doesn't know the Migos. Spunky doesn't know who the Migos are. He doesn't listen. He doesn't listen to the new stuff. He listens to the early 2000s, you know, late 90s, early 90s. I listen to all that. I love the early 2000s. I, I mean, I was literally in my car today. I was I was bumping "So Sexy" by uh, "So Sexy" by R. Kelly today in my car. So I listen to a lot of. I listen to all the early 2000s, old shit, late 90s, early 90s, Eminem. All the old school shit, everything. Um, but the Migos, uh, yeah, he Spunky doesn't listen to any of the new stuff. So when I said the Migos, he was like, "Who's the Migos?" Like, wow, surprised to know what the Migos are. That was surprising. Not gonna lie, that was a little surprising. Yeah, Migos are great. Who else? I listen to him, Travis Scott. Who else do I listen to? Big Sean here and there. Um, Meek Mills gets on my nerves a little bit. He, I just feel like he's, his shit is just not as good um, anymore. Not like it used to be. Yeah, I know. These, little, these other rappers that are like coming out of the woodwork. Even... Um, I mean Drake I'm t I'm sick and tired of Drake. I think Drake was was great when he came out. I love the Thank Me Later album. That was probably my favorite Drake album. That was just it was it was a good flow album. And like the whole album was just was great all, all throughout. Um and and it and it was very vocal. You could you could really feel the song what it's about, not just saying stuff cuz you're saying it. You know what I mean? Those songs like we hear about mostly every damn rapper out there or every new rapper out there. Um,
Oh man, oh man, oh man. Yeah, rap nowadays is uh, shit. Some is good like Meek Mill, but these little whatever. <sighs> oh yeah, I just read that. I was just, I thought I missed something. Um, I think I'm out of supplies, so let's see what we could do here. I think I'm out of supplies. I gotta be in a public session? Fuck. I might get on some Borderlands. And uh, Corey Clement could be in the lead role of this running back position in front of Wendell Smallwood. I'm telling you, Wendell Smallwood, the longer he's hurt and the longer he stays out not getting playing time, Corey Clement is undrafted, and he's going to come in and take that damn spot away from him. Got a good feeling it's going to happen. I have a feeling that he plays a lot better than Wendell Smallwood. I, I already know. For if I look at it, I don't know how Wendell Smallwood's going to play now I don't know if he's gotten better I don't know because he's been hurt he hasn't been playing so um, if I can compare last year's Wendell Small to this year's Corey Clement um, seen a lot of great things so stupid who the fuck would do that so dumb I'm going to wait till 59ers gets on so we can play this. I know we have to do some missions, make some moolah. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm working with it. I'm working with 59ers as a team on here because we're trying to make mo as much money as possible. So already my value of my stock is already at 196000 right now. So really technically, um, let me switch to public and see what I could do. Sorry if um whoever's whoever watches the streams. I'm sorry if um sometimes the stream goes down because PS4 um sometimes it will go down and I have to restart the live stream again. Um so yeah. And by the way, if everybody forgot, I'm actually going to the Miami game next Thursday, so I will be there uploading video and gonna do some things. I'm actually. I think I'm, I'm. I already talked to Desert Eagle today. I'm, I think I'm gonna actually sleep at his house the night before. Actually, the the day I, I forgot what I think the day before or something. I, I don't know. I don't know what's happening yet, but all right. I want to go on that computer. We have to take a quick four minute break, real quick, and I got to do something real fast. Oh god damn, I gotta do this every this is so annoying, I swear to god. <gasps> Register as a VP blah 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 My organization is called and we've already discussed this already no fly zone. You are now the VP of No Fly Zone. Why are we always the pink colored? Why can't we be green? Always pink or purple. We got purple last time. We got pink the, the night before, and then we got purple again. So, yeah. Shit sucks. Um, Access laptop, please. Okay. Let's see what we got here. U.S. Manufacturer 15... 15 units of uh, we got 15 units of uh, weapons already manufactured 
Okay, now let's see how much the stock is worth here. Wow. So, sell your current stock of weapons to local buyers in Blaine County or sell further to buyers in Los Angeles for a larger payment upon delivery. So I can sell for Blaine County for 196000 or I can get 294000 to Los Santos. Holy crap. All right, so a resupply. Are you sure you want to steal? Oh, man, it goes up each time. It was like 15000 last time. I already have the upgrades. No, don't shut down business. Dumbass. Sell stock. Manage staff. I have I have them doing both right now. To research and um to research and manufacturing the weapons, so it just makes it a little bit easier. My research progress is already halfway, so um, once my research progress lands about all the way at the end here, fills all the way up, I could probably unlock something, hopefully. Um, I can unlock something to buy. I can actually unlock something to buy in War Cash and uh, the War Stock and Carry um, store, which is all military-based uh, uh, vehicles, stuff like that. But I could sell my stock right now for, wow. All right, well, we're going to... Steal some supplies without getting frickin' slaughtered. This one's more like quid pro quo. You take out some bad actors for me, I've got an easy resupply for you. It's a good deal, all right. Oh, that's easy. And I have an armored car. I have to have that armored car, bro. This car cannot get past anything. All right, what do I got? I got... How the hell do you see out of this thing? Oh, 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 oh! Eesh! Did not mean to do that. Now let's get back up top. Let's get around the edge here. Over the little jump. Boom. Alright, we're back on the road and we're going. So I got four, four and a half miles. I can't get killed in this car either, which is great. That's why I have it. 59ers was asking me the other day, he's like, oh, well, he was going to either buy, like, one of those big convoys with the machine guns on it that are bulletproof or get an armored car. I said, dude, get the armored car. It's really worth it. Like, you will not get hurt in this car. Like, you, you'll you crash a shitload of times. People will try to kill you, but you, nothing will happen to you. So I just got to kill some people. The worst is when you have to go pick up a vehicle and bring it all the way back. And then all these players are going to try to freaking get you. And they can't get me right now, so there's nothing they can really do about it. This fucking car is not meant for this damn road. And I hate this damn road. Me and 59ers were on this road, right? And we crashed. Ended up in the water. So that, that current for that... I was near the water right over here. Right where you're looking, right over here. I was right over here, but I was right near the waterfall. So the current was pulling me. And I couldn't... Um, I couldn't do anything. Like, I just kept going down each waterfall. Like, traveling. It was horrible. Oh, there's a player on a boat. That's dangerous as hell. Kill a few guys, call it a day. Still got two and a half miles to go right now, which friggin' sucks. Oh, you're fucked. 
Oh, got the biker gang over here. You definitely came in my fucking lane. Stupid ass. Alright. Only got pretty much two miles to go now. As of right now, two miles. Now we're below two miles. This is bullshit. But for the money, it's worth it. So when you sell your stock to a farther place, like when you sell it to Los Santos, it, you get more money. So I don't get why... So why do, they, why do they even give you the option to sell it to Blaine County, which is right where we are. It's cheaper for Blaine County. So you get literally a big difference in money. 160-something thousand to like 230-something thousand? Yeah. Big difference in money. All right, less than, uh, not even a mile. I got the best. I got. I have the best upgrades for for the supercars. Every upgrade is perfect. Oh, that sucks. I'm living at the rival. Oh, I have to eliminate their shit. I have to kill all these guys. Fucking serious? Who's behind me? Do I really have to go in that way? This shit fucking sucks. Oh shit, there's a guy in a fucking helicopter. Oh, you fucking piece of shit. God, this thing is fucked.
Yo, what the? Where are the supplies? Right here. I ran out of fucking ammo, I was so pissed. So stealing the supplies is better than paying, of course, which is stupid. I mean, I would just do this mission over and over again and not give a shit. Great.
There we go. No players attack me. Well, two players actually attack me, but supplies were delivered. All right. I'd rather do that than fucking pay 75 grand. At least you have some fun out of it. Oh, now I can actually... Okay, let's see what happens with this. Oh, I told her I want to relax. I said, are you going to be mad? She's like, no. Intercept take down Meriwether supply lines of Blaine County. Weaponized dune buggies will be issued to the team and should be re returned upon completion. Alright, so you have to turn in supplies to get these mobile operations missions. I don't know what they give you. At least I know now. So now... At least now... Man, not a lot of supplies though. Shit, that's all it gave me. It didn't give me more than that. Man, it was a very small shipment of supplies. It wasn't a big shipment. Okay. Some research. Manufacturing. No, my stock can go up very, very high. I just, yeah. Stock goes up. So I'm only making like 200 something grand, which is great. So I ain't bitching about it. I have this, I have that heist mission already ready. We can actually make some money off of that. We should go into a, we should do it, um, do it from, uh, what the fuck? Sit down, bitch. Resupply success rate 100%. So you get fast track research. No unlocks. Different magazine clips. I don't know what these are. Different scopes. Oh, you so you can keep stealing supplies. All right. So we can keep stealing supplies. That's fine with me. I got. I like this. This isn't too bad. This is a very quick way to make fucking money. I'm not gonna lie. No, because I can already make. 
I'm already if I sell my stock right now to Los Santos, I'll get 234,000. If I sell it to Blaine County, which is the county that we're in right now, it's only going to give us 160. I can't wait till season on though to see way this team has really got cuz do you think there're no I only back do you think they're holding back a lot? Well, they're, they're, look, when no one gets his preseason, you're not you're not scheming against another team. Like you're just playing your plays from your playbook. You're only playing 10 to 15 percent of your playbook. That's it. You're not showing everything. You don't want to show everything. Um, it's just th that's really it. Who's making plays and who's not? You're not scheming against anybody, really. So. Wouldn't even take it to heart. And there's no right? Yeah, it's Friday. Tomorrow's Saturday. Oh nice. Alright, cool. So this place should be popping. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know what you meant. 
Fansman.com Eagles insider John McMullen. Also covers the NFL for Fan Rag Sports. As the Eagles, the win isn't as important as what happened. Oh, no, 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 I'm not sleeping, no. I'm on my phone. Not because I'm like this. I'm like, it looks like I'm sleeping, but I'm not. I'm looking at my phone. Doing well. Thanks for having me, Josh. <laughs> so, John, obviously the wins and losses aren't as important as what the guys actually did on the field last night. So, no, it's I not. I asked this to Scott Grayson a little bit earlier, so I'm going to repeat the same question to you. When you walked away from the game last night, did you feel like there was a lot of positives out of last night? Or do you think it was just a little more positive and negative because there were some... Because to me, there were definitely some things that stood out from last night that I was a little iffy and not too thrilled about. Well, I think there were a lot of positives on the defensive side of the ball, uh, uh, a lot of issues on the offensive side of the ball. So I, I think it depends how you frame it. Uh, I think at least uh, on paper, uh, I think the Darby trade. Not nah, it's, it's ESPN. It's ninety-seven point three ESPN. Defense, and I think um, it's a, it's uh, it's on YouTube. It's not. It's called uh, ninety-seven point three ESPN. Cover all Philly sports. The group has a chance to be very very good this season, as in top ten. Oh, it sort of depends how you frame it. A lot of positives on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, uh, a lot of issues. Joey, Joey, Serlani, what's up, bro? I think it depends how you frame it. Uh, I think, at least uh, on paper, uh, I think the Darby trade sort of solidifies the one issue on defense, and I think that group has a chance to be very, very good this season, as in top ten in the NFL, and I think the offense as a whole is still obviously a work in progress. Couldn't, couldn't we argue, John, that part of Darby's performance last night might have been because of his familiarity with the Bills, and maybe we should just kind of let the let the jury maybe reconvene after the next game, because you know, would you, when you practice with a team, you know some of the mm -hmm. Steve so Means is great. We argue some of he always does. He's, he's very productive. Last night was a reflection of just his first-hand knowledge of the Bills. Yeah, I, I think that's fair to say. Uh, if you go back to last season and, and you think about how uh, good the Eagles looked against Sam Bradford, I think uh, a lot of that was the same. Uh, they knew Sam so well. They understood what he wanted to do, and I think Ronald certainly understood uh, what the Bills were trying to do, some of the routes, and then you add into the fact that it's a guy with spectacular speed covering Anquan Bolden for the most part, and he had him in his hip pocket, and that's not a guy who's going to threaten him. So all of that is, is certainly fair to point out, but it doesn't change the fact that he's much better uh, than anybody else they have at this particular position. He's the best cornerback they probably had in years from a talent standpoint. Uh, and you also have to look at the, the rest of the defense as a whole, which is, uh, I, I stated from the start, it's, it's pretty darn good. When you look at the front four, you look at the linebackers, you look at the safeties, that's a good group, specifically up front. When you talk about Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, Tim Jernigan, and whether it's going to be Vinny Curry or, or Derek Barnett, that's good. That is really, really good. So when you start from that standpoint, I, I think that's where the positives come from. And I think Darby being here just, again, solidifies the one weakness on that side of the ball. I'm not saying it makes it great, uh, but it makes it, it makes it acceptable. And then when you have the other part... Oh, yeah, Steve means will. Yeah, of course he will. Because he can move the D-tackle as well. He's very productive. Side of the ball, John. One of the things that you know, I saw last night from the defense was that you saw Jim Schwartz, what this defense can look like when they're aggressive from the first snap on. You know, Sometimes last year they were kind of put back on their heels, the cornerbacks. You saw McKelvin and... Nolan Carroll's names half the game because their backs were turned. You know, whereas this year you saw what happens when you have a corner like Darby out there who can go, you know, step for step with a wide receiver. You saw what happens when guys like Barnett and Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham are 
basically pushing the pocket back into the quarterback. You even saw guys like Steven Means, you know, second and third team guys getting pressure on the quarterback. Talk about the value of having guys who fit Jim Schwartz's scheme the Take out, out there on the field for the Eagles. The hardware. We'll well, you it, it, to do it's it. very important. And it starts, uh, I know, I, I'm not going to say one thing one week and say another the next. So when you look at Rodney McLeod blitzing uh, in creating the turnover early, uh, understand we kind of made fun of Don Capers and the Eagles did all week with all the blitzing he did in week one of the preseason. You know, game plan. So I, I, I'm not concerned about uh, aggression and stuff like that. If you understand what Jim wants to do, he wants to get to the quarterback with a four-man rush. Now, he will feel a little bit more comfortable going to the blitz if he has to, uh, if you have better players at the corner position, obviously, if they do with Darby. So that helps. That helps from that standpoint. But it's still going to be what it is. And he, as I said, he wants to get to the quarterback with a four-man rush. And on paper... They can do that, uh, which is a very, very positive sign because if you look around this league and you look at the Eagles' front four, it's top five in this league on paper. And I, I don't see that changing because the two guys at centers around are, are obviously Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham. And they, they're going to bring it every week, and they're going to be very, very difficult to block for any uh, opposing offense. Talk with John McMullen on 97.3 ESPN.com Eagles Insider. Check out his two latest articles on the website. First and 10 Eagles outlast the Bills late in, over, in overtime. I mean, on late interception. Yeah, I, I kind of did with the depth chart before the first game, the first preseason game. I made like a, a depth chart analysis video. But I'll make another one once everything starts to go. Yeah, he had some really good runs. But the thing that's about to meet John with Corey Clement. The play action with the three tight ends, he didn't just block the man coming for the quarterback. He blocked him hard. That was a very good block off of a play action. And to me, that was the key to that Selleck pass. Because let's be realistic, you can keep showing that pass over and over again, Selleck catching the ball. That's nice. But that pass never happens if Corey Clement doesn't lay out that block the way he did. Yeah, that's, that's a positive sign because when you talk about young running backs in this league, that's generally the biggest. Yeah, I will. I will. Have this pass I will. I promise. Let's pick up. Uh, so if he's going to make this roster, uh, he's going to have to be able to do that. And uh, as I also mentioned, uh, catching the football out of the backfield, you also have to put that in the equation, which he, to be honest, has not been very good at uh, to this point, either in games or in practice. So I think he's still got a long way to go, uh, but uh, he, he showed some of those young legs and uh, the fact that this team has not been able to run the football basically at all through two preseason games except when he's in there. So you have to at least raise your eyebrows uh, over that while also uh, realizing why Del Smallwood hasn't been out there yet. Darren Sproles really hasn't been out there. Uh, so, you know, he's a bubble player, but he's making it more difficult for the Eagles, and that's what you have to do as a young player, make those decisions difficult. You mentioned your article on the website about Wendell Smallwood, and we had Scott Grayson on there, and he talked about how Smallwood needs to get on the field as well, and you mentioned, you used the line, Wendell Smallwood better get out of the tub. You know, Wendell Smallwood is a guy who people had a lot of high hopes for because of his versatility. And the injuries are starting to make you wonder when this guy going to be on the field. Do you think, what do you think is more likely, that Clement steals Smallwood's spot on the roster or that they both make the team possibly when the cuts happen? I don't think they're both going to make the team absent an injury uh, of some nature uh, to one of the third down backs, and that would be Sproles and Danelle Pumphrey. Uh, so I, I think they're both fighting for the same spot. And I still think Wendell has uh, a, a significant leg up. Uh, the Eagles like the way he runs the football, but you have to be concerned. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the, 
the quote you'll hear from coaches throughout the league. The best ability is availability. I don't know. Smallwood's got to show me what he's got. If you're not on the field, you can't help anybody. So I, I think that's the one point. I think this week is very, very key for Wendell Smallwood. I think he'll be back uh, on the practice field. I think he'll play against Miami. And if he doesn't, well, he's got issues because – then people are going to start to raise their eyebrows, as I mentioned, and say maybe this uh, isn't worth it if he's not going to be able to be there. And that's when sort of Clement would be in the conversation. I still think, though, at this point, uh, he's more likely for the practice squad than the actual 53-man roster. John, we have to talk about Lane Johnson because, you know, last night, aside from that he got brutalized by the spin move by Jerry Hughes on the way to the quarterback. You know, it just looked like, John, that you would think a guy of his athleticism could make the flip. It shouldn't be that out of place. But his footwork looked a little sloppy. He looked like he was overthinking when he was out there. You know, Lane Johnson didn't exactly sell anybody on the idea of him moving from right tackle to left tackle anytime soon. No, he, he didn't, and the good news is he's not. So that's the positive part. Uh, I mean, you have to understand what went on to, to get him to start at left tackle, not only Jason Peters having a personal issue, uh, but also Vitae being out with a knee injury. Otherwise, he would have started uh, at left tackle. So, you know, the Eagles in the offseason when Jason was away from voluntary work, uh, with, with contract issues, the Eagles used Lane on the left side. The mentality is get them reps over there while they can. And I think that was the theory again here. Uh, and he is athletic enough to, to do it. And, and I think he'll be fine ultimately when he does move over. But it, it takes time. You can't just throw somebody in one week and say, go and left tackle. Yeah, no. People right. don't realize how good he is. Yeah, he's great. He's just, he, you're really putting him in a different position uh, the sort one of fucking day. If, if Lane was there practicing every week and, and, and getting the footwork down, getting the footwork right. down, uh, you'd see it get better each and every week. But to throw him out there cold against somebody like you, yeah, you're going to be embarrassed every once in a while. John, we'd be remiss if we didn't touch on what the big national story is coming out of the Eagles game, which was before the game. And I appreciated your tweet out there because you said, and I'm quoting from your tweet, Chris Long respects the national anthem and his teammates. The two have never been mutually exclusive class act who many could learn from. And I was saying earlier, John, that whether people agree or disagree with what Chris Long and Malcolm Jenkins did last night, they sounded like adults, they sound like professionals after the game discussing their reasoning why. And to me, I think that's a good signal to the rest of the league that you can do this type of stuff without doing it in a way that comes off as childish or immature or unaware. Whereas Chris Long and Malcolm Jenkins came off as very aware of what they were doing and they were very purposeful in their reasoning for it. Yeah, and I'm not sure. I don't think it was. Uh, they got together. They didn't talk about it. I, I think it did just kind of happen. And it was more, I think, from Chris's standpoint than Malcolm's and the fact that uh, he just wanted to do something to, to support his teammate. And the point I tried, it's difficult to get something across, obviously, in 140 characters. But I don't understand why people... Uh, can't, you know, everything isn't uh, simple, and, and it's not one side or the other. In fact, if you think about any problem in life, there's there's shades of gray, and, and that's the issue here, and I think it was a perfect example, because Chris has tremendous respect for the National Anthem. He said that, he said it again and again and again, but he also likes Malcolm Jenkins. He also respects his teammate. He also wants to support them. You don't have to agree with everybody on every aspect of life. In fact, I, I don't know anybody who does. Whether you're you're married, whether it's your wife, whether it's your husband, uh, people fight. People have disagreements. It, it doesn't mean you're coming from a, a a point of ill will, and yet you get into these political arguments. 
arguments and, and people take these stands and as I mentioned, they're not mutually exclusive. Both sides are wrong. If you think your side is right and there's no discussion uh, worthy from the other side, I got news for you. You're wrong. And it doesn't matter which side you're on because people come at issues from different perspectives uh, and they can believe different things. Uh, and to me, it's just head shaking that people can't understand that. So with John McMullen, you can follow him on Twitter at JF McMullen. He covers the NFL for Fan Rag Sports. John, let's hit on a couple NFL topics here. So Blake Bortles, he had five incompletions last night on the stat sheet, but was overlooked that those five incompletions were pretty ugly. The, the regression of Blake Bortles seems to have hit a breaking point finally for Doug Marone, where he's talking about the possibility that he's going to have a quarterback competition. If that's the case, Chad Henney could steal the job from Blake Bortles because Blake Bortles, from whatever whatever his mindset and his ability and skill set was in December of 2015 to what it is now, he seems like he is going in the wrong direction, going the wrong direction fast. And the irony, John, is that this could be the third Jaguars quarterback this franchise has drafted who has been drafted in the top 15 who has not turned out at all the way they had hoped. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it was pretty clear. I, I got a number of sources around draft time that, that said Tom Coughlin was not very high uh, on Blake Bortles, and he was considering taking the quarterback at number four overall. Uh, and it's sort of what I was just talking about uh, from uh, a different a political sense to a football sense. People assumed once they took Leonard Fournette that he didn't have an issue with Blake Bortles. No, he had an issue with Blake Bortles. He just didn't think the options available, whether it was Trubisky or Mahomes or, or Watson, were worthy of being selected there. That was not a stamp of approval on Blake Bortles by any stretch of the imagination. And you see it playing out now. Uh, the fact that this organization, and, and this is the underreported aspect of this, if Blake Bortles happens to be the starting quarterback this season and, say, gets injured in week three, well, his contract for next year is guaranteed for injury, so all of a sudden you're on the hook for $19 million. So you, you have to throw that into the equation as well. And at some point, it looks like they're getting to the breaking point and say, you know what, this guy isn't the answer, so let's play Henny. Let's not roll the dice on his health uh, and be caught with him for another season. Uh, it's not going to work out well because Chad Henny's not a good NFL quarterback. But Jacksonville's been losing for a long time, and I think it's going to continue this year. John, other NFL news. So it seems like we have conflicting information with Le'Veon Bell. Bell's agent denies there's any agreement on terms with the Steelers. Okay. She reports the Steelers offered him a five-year deal worth over $60 million. Ooh. There's other reports out there that Bell may not come back in time for the start of the season. You know, John, they need to figure out if Le'Veon Bell wants to be a part of this football team or not. Because I don't think... Bell understands, John, that you can say you want all the money you want, but if you're not out there available to play the game, no one's going to pay you anyway. Yeah, I mean, it's supply and demand, unfortunately, for him at that particular position. Uh, you're right. Uh, I mean, there's a limit to the fact, and I understand he's upset by that, but that's just the reality of it, and he will come in. Uh, I, I mean, those stories are Ridiculous! He's not going to walk away. He's not going to sit out. He's not going to retire, certainly. So he's a place for the Pittsburgh Steelers under the franchise tender, or he doesn't get paid. Uh, so that's not a concern. The concern from Pittsburgh's standpoint is you're probably going to have a guy coming in the week before the regular season or maybe two weeks, whenever he decides uh, it's time to get going, and perhaps he's not going to be ready. Uh, but he's so good, I, I wouldn't even be concerned about that standpoint. Long term, he's trying to make this argument that he's part running back, part receiver to sort of raise uh, that salary uh, up from that kind of standpoint. Uh, but the Steelers have 
all the leverage. They could franchise him again. Obviously, it would be a raise again, similar to what you see what's going on in Kirk Cousins. But because of the average of that position, it's never going to get to the number uh, that Le'Veon wants. And at some point, he's just going to have to accept that. John, one more final NFL topic here. Staying in the AFC North. The no way, Ravens. MC. You know they're not going to pay a running back that much money. Jeremy Zuta back to the fold with a two-year, $1 million dollar deal. The, and Jarvis Landry? It's uh, not going to happen. This is a situation where the Ravens, they just had so many injury issues, not just this year, but the last couple of years. It seems like they just can't avoid it. On top of all this, you have a quarterback who has a back problem. We don't really I still understand what he did to his back. This seems all this big suspicious mystery. All we know is that he did it while at the gym. Meanwhile, Ryan Mallett is continuing to prove why most people passed on him over the years because they don't really see him being what anybody ever anticipated he was recruited at a high school. It really seems like the Ravens are kind of at a crossroads here, John, because they they have, they were 8-8 eight eight last year. And now they're in a situation where if they don't get healthy... I don't see any way they're going to be any better than 7-9. and nine. No, I agree. It's not looking like a good season for the Ravens, which would be the third uh, straight one out of the playoffs. And obviously that's an organization used to, to being in the postseason. And some have even speculated, you know, John Harbaugh would be the dream coach of Jeffrey Lurie. And what happens if he has a bad season? What would, would the Eagles consider uh, moving on from Doug Peterson and things were just average or 8-8 eight eight or something of that nature if Harbaugh became available. I think that's something to keep an eye on. What? The injuries there have been significant already and it's not going to be good most likely. Flacco's not able to play and you mentioned we know from Tony Romo how tricky back injuries can be. Uh, they continue to say that he's going to be ready uh, for the regular season, but originally he himself said it was going to be one week of training. Jim Harbaugh is the head coach. Of, still not ready. I, mean, I could see it happening, but and I don't know. They're going to be really mad if Joe Flacco's not out there. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's one of those things. Football's a very, very difficult sport. You see it in Indianapolis as well with the injuries. It, it can ruin a season, and it can ruin a season quickly, and that seems to be what's going on in Baltimore. He is John McMullen. He's from 97.3 ESPN.com, Eagles Insider, also NFL columnist for Fan Rag Sports. You can follow him on Twitter. Nice work. Your technicians McMullen. are already breaking John, that down. John, appreciate the time. It's Friday. Hope we get to get to relax a little bit this weekend. Now practice starts up. You know that, John. Right? <laughs> I said a little bit. I didn't say a lot. <laughs> All right, John, take care. Enjoy your weekend, buddy. I think 
there is some truth to maybe the Jaguars cutting ties right now. You saw the Bills uh, getting what they could out of Sammy Watkins. They were too interested in re-signing him, and that was a plus talent who just had injury issues. Now you have a guy that uh, you kind of have to move if you're going to move on to looking at a new franchise quarterback. So very frustrating and never a good sign when uh, a couple weeks before the season you reopen your quarterback competition. And, of course, the backup quarterback is Chad Henney, and that doesn't really scream any excitement or confidence for anybody, whether you're a Jaguars fan or not. And the irony, Vinny, is that you look at the Jaguars, they've only been in existence for 21 years, but yet the two best quarterbacks in their franchise history, neither one of them were top high picks for that franchise, but yet Blake Bortles now could be the third guy who they draft high. They drafted Blaine Gabbert, they drafted Byron Leftwich, and now Blake Oh, man. Bortles. And there's a possibility that all three of them don't work out for them. Yeah, it's uh, just kind of disturbing here that uh, to get out of this cycle, you've got to break free. And sometimes it's not what you expect. It's not using that first round pick necessarily. We saw the Raiders 